three done. So you can see Woody and Steve just starting to head out on the crew access arm now. And there they are coming through the crew access arm. The commander and pilot, Steven and Woody, making their way inside Dragon. Big thumbs up and a wave from the crew. They're hoping today is the day. Core on countdown, crew are in the white room. You see uh, Arthur is the core at SpaceX, so they keep the shifts the same. So um, again, we kind of talked a little bit about last time, but the importance of all the sims leading up to this are the same voices. So they'll, you know, through the slip and through the scrub retiming, all the shifts at SpaceX and at Houston actually all stayed on the same timeline so they could be all the same people. That's Arthur Berrial, the crew operations resource engineer with SpaceX. That's his voice coming over. You can see the ninjas helping get their, uh, those are the shoe protects of the boot guards coming off. Yep. So protects for two things, FOD, FOD in the capsule is one thing, but the other thing is there's slots in the bottom of those heels, and that's what actually, when you see them get in, you'll see them put their foot up and then down, almost like putting on a, like a ski boot type thing where ah. it locks in, and that's what keeps your feet restrained under the launch loads and reentry loads, um, which is why you'll also see them sometimes if not during law uh, before they arm the launch escape system you'll see them lock them in um, but that also protects the channel from any nicks uh, or dings on the bottom side of that all right we've got a question uh, that's coming in from social media as the Go astronauts on, call in. started Arthur calling the ingress has started which we can see on our screen so here's the question space Brandon on Twitter asks He's referencing to the view out the window. What is it like to take in this view? Loud and clear, seat two, how me? And seat two has you loud and clear as well. So I'll tell you, it's uh, it's awesome. The the view out the dragon window, you don't really see getting in because you're as you saw as they crawl in, their head is towards the seats, and then when they f we flip around, you can see that the white room and that crew access arm kind of blocks the view out the two windows there, which you can see uh, if you look at Ninja 10 to their right and left, you can see the dragon windows. But the view you do have is before you walk across the crew access arm, and it's per... SpaceX Dragon, seat three, come check. Wait for Arthur. Loud and clear, seat three, how me? Good evening, Arthur, I have you the same. Yeah, so the view from where... Good evening, Woody and Steve. Good to hear from you. Sultan and Andre are standing is awesome. you got the water, especially on a clear night. Um, you do this during dry dress. You come up here and take in the view, but seeing... Yeah, I think he's talking about taking in the yeah. view right there. So right? you can go to the corner uh, to the where that kind of white post is, kind of where Ninja 14 is at, and you can kind of hang off the edge. Don't do not do it too far. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but yeah, it is it's pretty amazing. And the seeing... The clouds and the water, I think, is what's most distinctly different. Uh, so on Earth, you can see the actual individual waves and the clouds moving in from space. Uh, you definitely can't see that level of detail. Um, so yeah, trying to take all that in, I don't think you really appreciate it until you come back and see that same thing. And we can see Nick Haig now taking uh, cell phone shots of Sultan as he's on the phone, which a good fellow astronaut does. <laughs> and you heard uh, Woody and Steve checking in with Arthur. Those are just the initial comm checks. Uh, we'll do much more intensive ones later, but that's just to make sure that when they connect their umbilical, that it's fully seated. And so if you get a good comm check, you know that the little pins that uh, connect that loop are good. Our so mission specialist now getting ready to board Dragon, Sultan and Andre with a big thumbs up. Beautiful shot from high above looking into the crew access arm as they make their way aboard Dragon. And while we're watching the mission specialists in action, let's take another social question, which is relevant. <laughs> and it's we were just yeah. showing off, showing, yep. you know, getting the grab space text is yep, badge. We, yeah, so, it is, so they, we talked about last time, they grab the, the, the ninja's name tags to, to take with them, uh, and they distribute those amongst the crew so they can fit them in their pockets and, and satchels. And the question there looks like, What's the mobility like on the pressure suit while walking around? It's actually fine. It's just a little, uh, a little bit of pressure on the top of your head pulling down. Um, and as you saw, that's kind of why they arch their back to look up. You can't tilt your neck backwards. And obviously, if you turn your head side to side, your head is kind of turning inside the, the helmet as opposed to the entire helmet moving. Um, so it's just more a matter of not straining your neck. It's like 
traction almost. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a mild traction. Yeah, and, and it can get hot, so you don't do a whole lot of action uh, unless you have cooling attached to you, especially with the, the weather here. Um, but compared, again, this is a in what's called an IV, in-vehicle suit, IVA suit, not a EV or extravehicular suit. So way different than if you were trying to walk around in an EMU, which is what we use for spacewalks, that would be a way different story. And you, you probably would not be able to walk uh, in on Earth gravity as it weighs upward of three, 400 pounds, uh, whereas this one is, is meant to be able to move around. Um, when it is inflated, it's meant to be in the seat. So if, if it was pressurized, it's not meant to be moving around in the cabin with it because you can't you don't really have uh, joint mobility so it's meant to be restrained by the straps and in the seats to, to be fully functional in a depressed scenario there go our two mission specialists with the duck as they cross the hatch being very careful not to touch or hit the edges of that hatch because that seal is so very important to maintaining a good seal when they pressurize the cabin in space. And now our cameraman will go inside. Or wait. <laughs> and so those are the those are the crew satchels. You saw those uh, white bags. Woody and Steve's are already on their leg. There's a little loop under there uh, that the ground techs help connect for them. You see uh, Sultan and Andre hooking in their umbilicals. So expect shortly they'll do their comm checks with Arthur of the core. And it's worth noting for those who follow very closely that SpaceX is now doing some of their checks and operations in parallel rather than sequentially. It could end up sequentially, but they're aiming for parallel and that will reduce the total time of the operation starting right now by about 27 minutes. Call, this is MS2, C4, uh, how to read me, come check doing comm checks even as they're getting seated. Loud and clear from seat four, how me? Loud and clear, seat four. Encore, uh, MS-1, uh, comm check. And loud and clear, MS-1 from seat one, how me? I got a loud and clear. And a great view of Andre's uh, buckle there, so, so it's a five-point harness. Um, the crew can totally do it on their own, but just to save wear and tear on the suits, a lot of times the ground crew will, will help with doing that. Um, and that way it makes sure it's really cinched down. So the way each on that circular harness around his waist, each of the waist straps and then the leg and the shoulders connect into a slot. And then to get out, you rotate it counterclockwise or clockwise and all five pop out. Similar to a harness in a jet? Right, it's actually very similar to like an F-35 harness. Yep, same kind of design. And Raj, of course, you flew the F-35 and the F-16 and the uh, F-16. No, don't, no, not no F-16. No, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> F-15 F and F-14? I-15E uh, e and then F-35. Yeah. F-35, okay. Don't worry. I, it's okay for people who fly the F-16. I still, it's, it's not their fault. <laughs> <laughs> well, the F-35, certainly the tip of the spear when it comes to the Air Force, and uh, you were involved in that program for a while. I was, yep. I think the only job I would have left that job for was this job. So. <laughs> and we're glad you're here. Had an incredibly successful Crew 3 mission you were the commander of, and you had some great uh, astronauts along with you. Yeah, so flew with uh, yeah, Tom Marshburn, uh, was our, our pilot. He had been on that he had been on a shuttle on a Soyuz, so just a great asset to have some some wide breadth. Kayla Barron, a classmate of mine, uh, also a submariner. Turtle. Yeah, fellow uh -huh. turtle, fe uh, submariner. Um, yes. And so following in, in Steve's footsteps, and uh, and then Matthias Maurer uh, from ESA, the German astronaut, his first space flight as well. Uh, and just awesome to get to work with all of them. It was, uh, yeah, it was the time of our life up there, honestly. <laughs>